Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I'm justified, not because I do everything right, but because I put faith in Jesus and Jesus' holiness makes me holy, not my holiness. My holiness is a fruit, not the root of my relationship with God. And now here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today's the end of my third week of teaching verse by verse through the book of Romans. And I tell you, this has been powerful. This is one of my favorite things to minister on. These are the truths that just totally revolutionized my life. And I believe the same thing would happen for any of you if you were to get this revelation. I'm uh, struggling somewhat because I could spend hours on every single verse and I'm trying to go through this so that it won't take me three or four years to get through the book of Romans. But man, it's hard not to comment on everything that the Lord has shown me. I've got this new book entitled Romans, Paul's Masterpiece on Grace. And this is a new book that we've put out that teaches verse by verse. It's a lot of material in there, as you can see. And so we will be advertising this at the end of the program. We also are advertising my living commentary, which if you haven't uh, heard about that, in my estimation, that is the best resource I have. I've written footnotes on over 25,000 verses in the Bible. There's a total of 31,000 verses in the Bible, and I've uh, commented on over 25,000 of them. We also have DVDs and CDs, and we'll give out all that information at the end of the program. I'm now in Romans chapter 5, and I've spent a couple of days talking about a few of these verses, and I really haven't got time to go back through it. The things that I was saying yesterday are so radical from what most people think that um, I can't even go back and summarize it or I'll, I'll lose people. I encourage you to please... You can go to our website and you can get this teaching absolutely free of charge. You can look at the archive copies of this. But real quickly, I was saying in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, that sin entered the world through one man, Adam, and we all became sinners through Adam. Then in verse 13, it says, until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. That is a radical statement because there was no law for about the first 2,000 years after Adam's fall. And then since the law, since Christ came, He is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes is what the Scripture says. And so now we aren't under the law and God is not imputing our trespasses unto us. Man, I would love to turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21, because that's exactly what this is talking about. He is not imputing sin unto us. He's imputing righteousness unto those who are born again. And those words, again, go right over the head of most people. They don't fully understand what we're talking about. But again, I could spend weeks on this one subject. I want to get on to some other things. Today, what I want to do is to share with you that these verses right here, Romans chapter 5, verse uh, 14, well, actually verse 15 through the end of the chapter, were kind of like a, the last nail in the coffin of me dying to my self-righteousness. Now, that's a huge statement. Let me just give you a little bit of background. That I got born again when I was eight years old, but I went to church and basically got the concept that God was going to love me and answer my prayers proportional to my performance. And so I really tried to perform. And I mean, I performed better than anybody I knew as far as not doing the things that they were sin said were sin. I never danced. I've never taken a drink of liquor. I've never smoked a cigarette. I've never used a word of profanity. I never even tasted coffee. I'm not saying that coffee is sin, but I'm just saying that I lived a separated life, but I did it thinking this is what I had to do to, to have God love me and accept me and answer my prayers. And without realizing it, I became a Pharisee and I got caught up in my own righteousness. And then I had this experience where God showed up and showed me His righteousness 
AND MY RIGHTEOUSNESS, MY SELF-RIGHTEOUSNESS WAS LIKE FILTHY RAGS. I WOUND UP REPENTING, AND I EXPECTED GOD'S JUDGMENT WHEN I SAW HOW UNGODLY I WAS IN HIS SIGHT, BUT INSTEAD OF JUDGMENT, MAN, I HAD A TANGIBLE LOVE THAT JUST CAME OVER ME, AND IT OVERWHELMED ME. AND IT TOOK ME A NUMBER OF YEARS TO RECONCILE WHAT I HAD BEEN TAUGHT ABOUT GOD LOVING ME PROPORTIONAL TO MY PERFORMANCE TO WHAT I EXPERIENCED, BECAUSE I EXPERIENCED GOD'S LOVE AT A TIME IN MY LIFE FOR THE FIRST TIME I REALIZED I DIDN'T DESERVE ANYTHING. AND they, they, I, I KNEW THAT MY EXPERIENCE OF EXPERIENCING GOD'S LOVE AND BEING CAUGHT UP IN THE PRESENCE OF GOD FOR FOUR AND A HALF MONTHS, I KNEW THAT THAT WAS REAL, BUT IT WAS CONTRARY TO EVERYTHING I WAS EVER TAUGHT BECAUSE I DIDN'T DESERVE IT. ACTUALLY, IT WAS WHEN I FINALLY REALIZED I DIDN'T DESERVE ANYTHING IS WHEN THIS GREAT ENCOUNTER WITH GOD CAME. AND SO I COULDN'T UNDERSTAND IT, AND I STRUGGLED, STRUGGLED, STRUGGLED. AND I WENT TO A BIBLE STUDY. AND AGAIN, I'M NOT SAYING THAT THESE ARE... The, THIS IS THE WAY IT SHOULD BE. I'M JUST TELLING YOU THIS IS MY... MY uh, TESTIMONY. IT'S MY BACKGROUND. I WAS RAISED IN A BAPTIST CHURCH, AND WE WERE TAUGHT THAT WOMEN COULD TEACH YOUNG BOYS OR TEACH OTHER WOMEN, BUT WOMEN WEREN'T SUPPOSED TO TEACH MEN. THAT'S A MISAPPLICATION OF FIRST TIMOTHY CHAPTER 2. BUT ANYWAY, THAT'S WHAT I WAS TAUGHT. AND SO I HAD A PREJUDICE AGAINST WOMEN TEACHING. I WASN'T VIOLENT ABOUT IT. I WASN'T MEAN, BUT I JUST DIDN'T... DIDN'T THINK THAT A WOMAN TEACHING A BIBLE STUDY HAD ANYTHING TO OFFER ME. BUT I WAS SO HUNGRY TO RECONCILE. AGAIN, I HAD SEEN THE LOVE OF GOD. I'D HAD THE LOVE OF GOD POURED OUT IN MY LIFE, AND YET MY THEOLOGY DIDN'T MATCH IT, AND I WAS TRYING TO FIGURE THIS OUT and, AND HARMONIZE WHAT I HAD EXPERIENCED WITH WHAT I SAW IN THE WORD OF GOD. AND SO BECAUSE I WAS SO DESPERATE, I WENT TO THIS BIBLE STUDY. A WOMAN WAS TEACHING IT, WHICH AUTOMATICALLY OFFENDED ME, AND SO I WAS SITTING THERE WITH A CHIP ON MY SHOULDER, AND THIS WAS BACK IN ABOUT 1971. AND IT WAS DURING THE HIPPIE TIME, AND I WAS RAISED IN A CHURCH THAT IF A MAN'S HAIR TOUCHED HIS COLLAR, YOU GO DIRECTLY TO HELL. YOU DON'T PASS GO. YOU DON'T GET $200. IT'S JUST, YOU KNOW, THAT YOU COULD NOT DO THAT. AND for TO SEE THESE HIPPIES WITH HAIR DOWN PAST THEIR SHOULDERS AND STUFF, I THOUGHT I WAS BEING VERY GENEROUS BY, YOU KNOW, NOT JUST TURNING AROUND AND WALKING OFF. I WAS OFFENDED BY THE WOMAN LEADING THE BIBLE STUDY. I WAS OFFENDED BY THESE HIPPIES AND ALL OF THESE THINGS, AND I, I THOUGHT I WAS BEING VERY GENEROUS JUST NOT SAYING ANYTHING AND SITTING THERE AND LISTENING TO IT AND SEEING WHAT THEY HAD TO SAY. BUT THEN SOME OF THESE HIPPIE GUYS GOT UP AND GOT TO TALKING ABOUT BEING THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD. AND WHEN THEY SAID THAT, THAT WAS JUST AS FAR AS I WAS WILLING TO GO. I MEAN, I MIGHT PUT UP WITH A WOMAN LEADING THE BIBLE STUDY. I MIGHT PUT UP WITH THEM DRESSING AND HAVING THEIR HAIR A DIFFERENT LENGTH AND STUFF, BUT WHEN THEY STARTED CLAIMING THAT THEY WERE RIGHTEOUS, I COULDN'T TOLERATE THAT. AND I STOOD UP AND WHOOPED OUT MY THREE SCRIPTURES ON THEM. ISAIAH 64, THEY'RE, YOU KNOW, ALL YOUR RIGHTEOUSNESS IS LIKE FILTHY RAGS. THERE IS NONE RIGHTEOUS, NO, NOT ONE. ALL HAVE SINNED AND COME SHORT OF THE GLORY OF GOD. AND I JUST THOUGHT I PUT THEM IN THEIR PLACE, QUOTED THESE SCRIPTURES TO THEM, AND I BRACED MYSELF TO BE ATTACKED BY THEM. AND, YOU KNOW, INSTEAD OF THEM GETTING MAD AT ME OR ANYTHING, THEY JUST, I MEAN, REAL LOVINGLY SAID THAT, YOU KNOW, WE USED TO THINK EXACTLY LIKE WHAT YOU'RE TALKING ABOUT, THOUGHT THAT OUR RIGHTEOUSNESS WAS BASED ON WHAT WE DID, HOW WE LOOKED, HOW WE PERFORMED. BUT NOW WE'VE COME TO UNDERSTAND THE FAITH RIGHTEOUSNESS THAT IS RECEIVED BY GRACE THROUGH JESUS, NOT BASED ON OUR PERFORMANCE. AND FOR EVERY ONE SCRIPTURE THAT I QUOTED ABOUT OUR RIGHTEOUSNESS BEING LIKE FILTHY RAGS, THEY HAD FIVE OR SIX SCRIPTURES THAT TALKED ABOUT US BEING RIGHTEOUS. AND THAT JUST FLOORED ME, PLUS THE FACT THAT THEY WERE OPERATING IN LOVE. I COULD TELL THAT THEY REALLY CARED ABOUT ME. AND JESUS SAID, THIS IS HOW YOU KNOW THAT THEY'RE MY DISCIPLES BY THEIR LOVE ONE FOR ANOTHER. SO IT REALLY CAUGHT ME OFF GUARD. IF THEY HAD RESPONDED IN THE FLESH, IF THEY HAD GOTTEN MAD AND ARGUED WITH ME, I MIGHT HAVE GOTTEN IN AND ARGUED WITH THEM. BUT BOY, THIS REALLY CONVICTED ME. AND WHEN I WENT HOME FROM THAT BIBLE STUDY, I DETERMINED I'M GOING TO PROVE THESE GUYS WRONG. AND I WENT OUT AND BOUGHT A YOUNG'S ANALYTICAL CONCORDANCE, AND I LOOKED UP EVERY TIME IN THE BIBLE THAT THE WORD RIGHTEOUSNESS, RIGHTEOUSNESS SAYS, RIGHTEOUS, RIGHTEOUS, 
ANY FORM OF THE WORD RIGHTEOUS WAS USED. AND I MEAN, THERE WAS OVER A THOUSAND OF THEM. AND THIS IS BACK BEFORE I HAD A COMPUTER. I TOOK A legal, LEGAL PAD AND I WROTE DOWN EVERY ONE OF THOSE VERSES AND BEGAN TO STUDY THEM. AND uh, I, I WAS LIVING BY MYSELF. THIS IS BEFORE I WAS MARRIED. AND I WAS FASTING FOR ABOUT FIVE DAYS, I THINK IT WAS. AND I JUST STUDIED THESE VERSES FOR 15 HOURS A DAY, WROTE THEM OUT. AND AT THE END OF THAT WEEK, STUDYING ON RIGHTEOUSNESS, I CAME TO THE CONCLUSION THAT THESE HIPPIE GUYS WERE RIGHT, THAT RIGHTEOUSNESS IS A GIFT AND NOT SOMETHING THAT YOU EARN. AND I SAW THE DIFFERENCE BETWEEN A SELF-RIGHTEOUSNESS AND AN IMPUTED RIGHTEOUSNESS. AND I SAW IT BECAUSE I HAD JUST STUDIED IT SO MUCH. IT WAS LOGICAL, BUT I COULDN'T EMBRACE IT BECAUSE I HAD BEEN TAUGHT THAT I WAS RIGHTEOUS, THAT I WAS BORN IN SIN, THAT I HAD A SIN NATURE. AND I COULD SEE THE TRUTH, BUT I FELT CONDEMNED. AND SO I SAY ALL OF THAT TO SAY THAT THESE VERSES RIGHT HERE ARE LIKE THAT LAST NAIL IN MY SELF-RIGHTEOUS COFFIN. THIS IS WHAT TURNED MY LIFE AROUND. AFTER STUDYING ALL OF THESE THINGS, I CAME TO THESE VERSES, AND LET ME JUST SHARE THIS WITH YOU REAL QUICKLY, TRY AND SHARE SOME OF THE THINGS THAT THE LORD SPOKE TO ME. LIKE IN VERSE 15, IT SAYS, BUT NOT AS THE OFFENSE, SO ALSO IS THE FREE GIFT. IN OTHER WORDS, THIS IS MAKING A COMPARISON, BUT IT'S AN OPPOSITE COMPARISON. AND IT SAYS, NOT AS THE OFFENSE, SO ALSO IS THE FREE GIFT. FOR IF THROUGH THE OFFENSE OF ONE, MANY BE DEAD, THAT'S TALKING ABOUT THROUGH WHAT ADAM DID. THAT'S WHAT CAUSED SPIRITUAL DEATH IN ME. NOT, not WHAT I DID. WHAT I DID WAS A RESULT OF THE FACT THAT I WAS ALREADY DEAD IN TRESPASSES AND SINS. MY SINS DIDN'T MAKE ME A SINNER. IT WAS THE FACT THAT I WAS BORN A SINNER THAT MADE ME SIN. NOW, SEE, I UNDERSTOOD THAT 100%. AND I HAD ACCEPTED THAT, AND I SAW THAT IN SCRIPTURE. AND THIS SAYS, IF THROUGH THE OFFENSE OF ONE, MANY BE DEAD. I HAD ACCEPTED THAT. IT SAYS MUCH MORE, THE GRACE OF GOD AND THE GIFT BY GRACE, WHICH IS BY ONE MAN, JESUS CHRIST, HATH ABOUNDED UNTO MANY. YOU KNOW, THE LORD SPOKE TO ME, IT'S LIKE A COIN. IF YOU ACCEPT THAT THIS COIN IS REAL, WELL, THEN THE HEADS AND THE TAILS, THEY'RE PART OF THE SAME COIN. AND IF I ACCEPT ONE SIDE, WELL, THEN THE OTHER SIDE HAS TO BE GENUINE. AND IF I ACCEPTED THAT I WAS MADE A SINNER THROUGH WHAT ADAM DID, NOT THROUGH WHAT I DID, THEN I HAD TO ACCEPT THAT I AM NOW MADE RIGHTEOUS THROUGH WHAT JESUS DID, NOT THROUGH WHAT I DO. MAN, THAT'S HUGE. AND WHEN I SAW THIS, I MEAN, THIS VERSE JUST OVERWHELMED ME, AND I JUST KEPT READING, AND THERE ARE FIVE TIMES RIGHT HERE IN SUCCESSION, ONE AFTER ANOTHER, WHERE HE MAKES THIS SAME POINT, THAT IF YOU ACCEPT THAT YOU BECAME A SINNER THROUGH ADAM, THEN YOU HAVE TO ACCEPT THAT YOU BECAME RIGHTEOUS THROUGH WHAT JESUS DID, NOT THROUGH WHAT YOU DO. NOW, BECAUSE WE WERE BORN A SINNER, WE DO ACTS OF SIN. WE DID SIN. BUT IT'S NOT THOSE INDIVIDUAL SINS THAT MADE US A SINNER. IT WAS THAT SIN NATURE THAT MADE US SIN. IN THE SAME WAY, I HAVE NOW BEEN MADE RIGHTEOUS THROUGH JESUS, AND YES, I DO GOOD THINGS, BUT MY GOOD THINGS ARE A BYPRODUCT OF BEING MADE RIGHTEOUS. THEY DO NOT MAKE ME RIGHTEOUS IN THE SIGHT OF GOD. THAT'S WHAT ALL OF THESE VERSES ARE SAYING. SO THAT'S VERSE 15. IN VERSE 16, IT SAYS IT AGAIN. AND NOT AS IT WAS BY ONE THAT SINNED, SO IS THE GIFT. FOR THE JUDGMENT WAS BY ONE TO CONDEMNATION, BUT THE FREE GIFT IS OF MANY OFFENSES UNTO JUSTIFICATION. THAT IS SAYING THAT IT WAS ONE OFFENSE IN THE GARDEN OF EDEN, GENESIS CHAPTER 3, WHERE ADAM AND EVE SINNED AND ATE OF THE FORBIDDEN FRUIT, THAT USHERED DEATH NOT ONLY INTO THEM, BUT INTO EVERY ONE OF THEIR DESCENDANTS, YOU AND I. WE ALL BECAME SINNERS THROUGH WHAT ADAM AND EVE DID, AND IT SAYS THAT THE JUDGMENT WAS BY ONE, THE CONDEMNATION, BUT THE FREE GIFT IS OF MANY OFFENSES UNTO JUSTIFICATION. I'M JUSTIFIED, NOT BECAUSE I DO EVERYTHING RIGHT, BUT BECAUSE I PUT FAITH IN JESUS, AND JESUS' HOLINESS MAKES ME HOLY, NOT MY HOLINESS. MY HOLINESS IS A FRUIT, NOT THE ROOT OF MY RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. I TELL YOU, that, THAT'S HUGE. THE NEXT VERSE, IT SAYS, FOR IF BY ONE MAN'S OFFENSE, DEATH REIGNED BY ONE, YOU KNOW, DEATH HERE IS CERTAINLY INCLUDING TALKING ABOUT PHYSICAL DEATH, BUT IT'S NOT LIMITED 
TO JUST PHYSICAL DEATH. THE BIBLE SAYS IN ROMANS 6, 23, THE WAGES OF SIN IS DEATH. ANYTHING THAT CAME AS A RESULT OF SIN IS DEATH. DEPRESSION IS A FORM OF DEATH. LONELINESS IS A FORM OF DEATH. FEAR IS A FORM OF DEATH. SICKNESS IS A FORM OF DEATH. POVERTY IS A FORM OF DEATH. ANYTHING THAT CAME AS A RESULT OF SIN IS A FORM OF DEATH, AND IT CULMINATES IN THE PHYSICAL DEATH, AND ULTIMATELY, THE ULTIMATE DEATH IS WHAT REVELATION CALLS THE SECOND DEATH, WHERE PEOPLE AREN'T RESURRECTED AND GO TO BE WITH THE LORD, BUT THEY'RE RESURRECTED AND SPEND AN ETERNITY SEPARATED FROM GOD. THAT'S THE SECOND DEATH. THAT'S THE ULTIMATE DEATH. AND THIS IS SAYING, FOR IF BY ONE MAN'S OFFENSE, DEATH, NOT JUST PHYSICAL DEATH, BUT ALL THESE THINGS I'VE MENTIONED, REIGNED, THAT MEANS IT WAS IN CONTROL. IT WAS DOMINANT BY ONE, BY ADAM, NOT BY WHAT YOU DID. MUCH MORE, THEY WHICH RECEIVE ABUNDANCE OF GRACE AND OF THE GIFT OF RIGHTEOUSNESS SHALL REIGN IN LIFE BY ONE, JESUS CHRIST. SEE, IF YOU CAN ACCEPT THAT I BECAME A SINNER THROUGH ONE MAN AND WHAT HE DID, THEN I CAN ACCEPT THAT I BECAME FORGIVEN AND RIGHTEOUS THROUGH ONE MAN. BUT THERE ARE MANY CHRISTIANS THAT HAVE ACCEPTED THIS ONE SIDE OF THE COIN. THEY WILL SAY, YES, I WAS MADE A SINNER THROUGH ADAM. I INHERITED THIS SIN NATURE, AND THAT ALL HAPPENED THROUGH ADAM. BUT I CAN'T ACCEPT THAT I AM RIGHTEOUS ONLY THROUGH FAITH IN JESUS. I'VE ALSO GOT TO ADD TO IT. I'VE ALSO GOT TO BE RIGHTEOUS. DID YOUR SINS THAT YOU COMMIT MAKE YOU A GREATER SINNER? NO, YOUR SIN NATURE WAS THE SAME. SOME PEOPLE RESTRAIN THAT SIN NATURE AND OUTWARDLY DON'T COMMIT AS MANY ACTS OF SIN, BUT IT DOESN'T MATTER. THEY STILL ARE A SINNER. THERE ISN'T A HELL NUMBER TWO OR A HELL NUMBER THREE FOR PEOPLE TO GO TO. THERE'S NOT A... You know, THERE'S NO REWARD FOR BEING THE BEST SINNER THAT EVER WENT TO HELL. ALL OF SIN COMES SHORT OF THE GLORY OF GOD, AND THE WAGES OF SIN IS DEATH. AND SO IF YOU UNDERSTAND THIS, YES, SOME PEOPLE ACT OUT THEIR SIN NATURE MORE THAN OTHER PEOPLE DO, BUT FORGET THE ACTIONS RIGHT NOW. EVEN IF YOU COULD SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER RESTRAIN THAT SIN NATURE AND NOT ACT IT OUT, YOU STILL HAVE A SIN NATURE AND YOU WOULD BE SEPARATED FROM GOD FOR ETERNITY. YOU GOT THAT THROUGH ADAM, AND THEN YOUR ACTIONS DIDN'T MAKE YOU A GREATER SINNER. IT JUST MEANS THAT YOU, you ACTED OUT. YOU GAVE VENT TO THAT OLD SIN NATURE. ON THE OPPOSITE SIDE, BUT IN A LIKE MANNER, YOU BECAME RIGHTEOUS THROUGH WHAT JESUS DID, NOT THROUGH WHAT YOU DO. AND THERE ARE SOME PEOPLE THAT ACT IT OUT BETTER. THERE ARE SOME PEOPLE THAT COOPERATE BECAUSE THEY HAVE THE RENEWED MIND, AND THEY UNDERSTAND, AND THEY LET GOD FLOW THROUGH THEM, AND THEY MANIFEST A GREAT DEGREE OF HOLINESS. BUT THAT HOLINESS DOES NOT MAKE THEM ANY MORE RIGHTEOUS IN THE SIGHT OF GOD. GOD IS LOOKING AT YOU IN THE SPIRIT. JOHN 4, 24 SAYS, GOD IS A SPIRIT, AND THOSE WHO WORSHIP HIM MUST WORSHIP HIM IN SPIRIT AND IN TRUTH. AND IT'S YOUR SPIRIT PART OF YOU THAT WAS CHANGED. GOD'S NOT LOOKING AT YOUR PHYSICAL BODY AND YOUR MENTAL, EMOTIONAL PART. HE'S AWARE OF THAT. HE DEALS WITH YOU. HE'LL SHOW YOU WHEN YOU'RE DOING THE WRONG THING AND THAT SATAN IS GOING TO TAKE an ADVANTAGE OF YOU. BUT GOD RELATES TO YOU SPIRIT TO SPIRIT, AND WHEN YOU GET BORN AGAIN, YOU BECOME A NEW PERSON IN CHRIST JESUS AND NO LONGER DOES GOD LOOK AT YOU THROUGH YOUR ACTIONS. HE LOOKS at, th AT YOU THROUGH THE SPIRIT, WHO YOU ARE IN CHRIST, AND HE SEES YOU RIGHTEOUS. YOU ARE RIGHTEOUS THROUGH WHAT JESUS DID, THE SAME WAY THAT YOU BECAME A SINNER THROUGH WHAT ADAM DID. MAN, THAT'S TREMENDOUS. IN VERSE 18, IT SAYS, THEREFORE, AS BY THE OFFENSE OF ONE, THAT'S TALKING ABOUT ADAM, JUDGMENT CAME UPON ALL MEN TO CONDEMNATION, EVEN SO, BY THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF ONE, THAT'S TALKING ABOUT JESUS, THE FREE GIFT CAME UPON ALL MEN UNTO JUSTIFICATION OF LIFE. YOU KNOW, SOMEBODY MIGHT BE THINKING, THIS DOESN'T SEEM FAIR FOR ME TO BE A SINNER AND SEPARATED FROM GOD THROUGH WHAT ADAM DID 6,000 YEARS AGO. THAT DOESN'T SEEM FAIR. WELL, IN THE SAME WAY THAT THAT MAY NOT SEEM FAIR, IT MAY NOT SEEM FAIR THAT YOU SHOULD BECOME RIGHTEOUS THROUGH WHAT JESUS DID. BUT YOU KNOW WHAT? GOD SET IT UP SO THAT IF SIN PASSED UPON ALL MEN, FOR THAT ALL HAVE SINNED, WELL, THEN ALSO RIGHTEOUSNESS PASSES UPON ALL MEN WHO WILL RECEIVE IT AS A GIFT FROM GOD AND NOT SOMETHING THAT THEY TRY AND EARN. MAN, THIS, this IS AWESOME. LIKE I SAID, 
I HAD BEEN STUDYING AND I SAW THESE TRUTHS, BUT I JUST COULDN'T ACCEPT IT. BUT WHEN I SAW THESE VERSES, IT WAS MAKING THESE TWO COMPARISONS IN EVERY ONE OF THESE VERSES, FIVE DIFFERENT TIMES, IT SAID, AND IF I ACCEPTED ONE HALF OF THIS, WHICH I DID WITHOUT RESERVATION, THEN HOW COULD I REJECT THIS OTHER PART? AND THE LORD JUST SHOWED ME THAT I HAD TO ACCEPT IT BY FAITH. THE SAME WAY THAT I HAD INHERITED A SIN NATURE, I HAVE INHERITED A BORN AGAIN RIGHTEOUS NATURE THROUGH WHAT JESUS DID. AND SO IN VERSE 19, FOR AS BY ONE MAN'S DISOBEDIENCE MANY WERE MADE SINNERS, SO BY THE OBEDIENCE OF ONE SHALL MANY BE MADE RIGHTEOUS. MAN, THAT'S AWESOME. IT'S NOT MY OBEDIENCE THAT CAUSES ME TO BE RIGHTEOUS. YOU KNOW, RIGHTEOUS IS A RELIGIOUS WORD, BUT... AND THIS IS AN OVERSIMPLIFICATION, BUT IN JUST LAYMAN'S TERM, RIGHTEOUSNESS MEANS IN RIGHT STANDING WITH GOD. I AM NOT IN RIGHT STANDING WITH GOD THROUGH WHAT I'VE DONE, BUT THROUGH WHAT JESUS DID. IT'S HIS OBEDIENCE, NOT MY OBEDIENCE, THAT MAKES ME ACCEPTED WITH GOD. VERSE 20, IT SAYS, MOREOVER, THE LAW ENTERED THAT THE OFFENSE MIGHT ABOUND, BUT WHERE SIN ABOUNDED, GRACE DID MUCH MORE ABOUND. YOU KNOW, AGAIN, I'VE GOT A SERIES ENTITLED THE TRUE NATURE OF GOD THAT PROBABLY SPENDS TWO HOURS SAYING SOMETHING THAT I'M GOING TO SPEND 20 SECONDS SAYING. BUT THE LAW WASN'T GIVEN TO SET YOU FREE. THE LAW WAS GIVEN TO BIND YOU AND TO TIE YOU SO MUCH TO YOUR SIN THAT IT WOULD MAKE YOU DESPAIR OF EVER BEING SELF-RIGHTEOUS AND YOU WOULD JUST THROW YOURSELF ON THE MERCY OF GOD AND ASK FOR FORGIVENESS. SOMEHOW RELIGION HAS TOTALLY REVERSED THAT AND MADE THE LAW SOMETHING GOOD WHEN THE BIBLE MAKES IT CLEAR THAT THE LAW ITSELF WAS PURE AND HOLY, BUT BECAUSE I WAS UNHOLY, THE LAW ACTUALLY BECAME A BAD THING FOR ME BECAUSE ALL IT DID WAS CONDEMN ME. IT NEVER POINTED OUT ANYTHING GOOD THAT I EVER DID. IF I DID 99 THINGS OUT OF 100 RIGHT, THE LAW WOULD NEVER SAY, WAY TO GO, YOU MADE 99. NO, IT WOULD POINT OUT THE ONE THING I DID WRONG AND SHOW ME THAT BECAUSE OF IT, I DESERVE TO GO TO HELL. THE LAW NEVER ISSUED A COMPLIMENT. IT WAS NEVER INTENDED TO BUILD YOU UP. IT WAS INTENDED TO BIND YOU AND TO BRING YOU DOWN AND TO GET YOU TO QUIT TRUSTING IN YOURSELF, TO MAKE YOU SO CONDEMNED THAT YOU JUST CALLED OUT TO GOD FOR MERCY. SO WHERE SIN ABOUNDED, GRACE DID MUCH MORE ABOUND, THAT AS SIN HATH REIGNED UNTO DEATH, EVEN SO MIGHT GRACE REIGN THROUGH RIGHTEOUSNESS UNTO ETERNAL LIFE BY JESUS CHRIST OUR LORD. MAN, THAT 21ST VERSE, THERE'S A LOT IN THAT, AND I'M JUST OUT OF TIME, HADN'T GOT TIME TO SAY IT, BUT GRACE REIGNS. THAT MEANS GRACE IS LIKE A KING, BUT IT REIGNS THROUGH RIGHTEOUSNESS. IF YOU DON'T UNDERSTAND THAT YOU ARE IN RIGHT STANDING WITH GOD, NOT BECAUSE OF WHAT YOU DO, BUT BECAUSE OF WHAT JESUS DID FOR YOU, AND ALL YOU HAVE TO DO IS ACCEPT IT BY FAITH. IF YOU DON'T UNDERSTAND THAT, GRACE WILL NOT REIGN. IT WON'T DOMINATE IN YOUR LIFE. YOU'LL LIVE UNDER CONDEMNATION. AND SAD TO SAY, THIS IS WHERE SO MANY CHRISTIANS ARE. AGAIN, I WANT TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE GET THIS BRAND NEW BOOK WE'VE GOT OUT ENTITLED ROMANS, PAUL'S MASTERPIECE ON GRACE. IT'S A THICK BOOK. IT NOT ONLY HAS THE PRINTED TEXT, IT HAS MY COMMENTARY FROM OUR LIVING COMMENTARY, THE ROMANS PORTION, AND THEN IT ALSO HAS MY TEACHING THAT I'VE DONE ON THIS. ALL OF THOSE THINGS ARE THERE. AND YOU STUDY ALL OF THIS, I GUARANTEE YOU THE BOOK OF ROMANS WILL COME ALIVE TO YOU. WE'VE ALSO GOT DVDs AND CDs THAT GO WITH IT, AND WE'RE ALSO OFFERING MY LIVING COMMENTARY. SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU ALL THAT INFORMATION ABOUT HOW TO GET THESE MATERIALS, AND PLEASE CALL OUR WRITE TODAY.